Well, Russia and China are considering putting up a nuclear power plant on the moon from the 20 or from 2033 to 2035. Yuri Borisov, the head of Russia's space agency Roscosmos, says the move will one day allow lunar settlements to be built. Nuclear power generation on the moon. The idea might sound like science fiction, but there is no hiding the growing competition for lunar resources. Solar power, the mainstay of current missions, has limitations on the moon's perpetually shadowed regions. On the other hand, nuclear power could provide an abundant energy source. The head of Russia's space agency, Roscosmos, says nuclear power could one day allow lunar settlements to be built. Also, not to mention, it is all about a new space race. The Cold War saw the US and USSR locked in a space duel. In 1957, the Soviets won the first lap by launching Sputnik the world's first artificial satellite. It then sent Yuri Gagarin, the first human in space, in 1961. The moon became the ultimate prize. The space race resulted in the Apollo missions, with the US planting its flag on the lunar surface in 1969. Seven decades on, there is a new space race power. China is making giant leaps, landing the first spacecraft on the far side of the moon in 2019. It returned home with lunar samples in 2020. Beijing's moves have made Washington wary. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson publicly expressed concern over China claiming resource-rich areas. Now, with Moscow and Beijing joining hands, a nuclear reactor on the moon would be a game-changer. Of course, there are challenges. Building a nuclear reactor on Earth is hard enough, let alone lugging it all the way to the moon. There is also the fear of the unknown. What will be the consequences of an accident on the lunar surface? Clearly, the moon will not be immune to terrestrial geopolitics. Let's now talk about this planet ownership race. Retired Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis is a military expert and host of Daniel Davis Deep Dive on YouTube. Colonel Davis is joining us live from Starling, Virginia. Colonel Davis, good to see you and welcome to the show. How alarmed should Washington be if at all Moscow and Beijing jointly built a nuclear plant on the moon? Well, I, by itself, it's, it's not anything unique. Uh, lots of nations are, are moving in that direction. Um, you, you guys, India, had uh, you know a, a lunar a mission last year. The United States is trying to work to get back again to the to the moon because there are so many resources there that really before hadn't really even been in the uh, conversation. Uh, but now then there are because there's a great many minerals and other kinds of use, useful items that could be mined from the moon to bring back. So it's a natural next level uh, uh, process where nations are going to compete with each other to go. But I will tell you, <clears throat> the one thing that does concern me a little bit is part of this operation. Uh, the uh, I believe it was the Chinese side that announced that they're developing what they called a cyclopean a vehicle that will go back and forth uh, and move around in space to collect debris out of orbits and also uh, items out of orbits, which, of course, that has dual use. It could be used for civilian purposes to clean up problems, but it could also be used uh, offensively to take out enemy satellites. That's one of the things I'd be looking at. Carlo Davis, do you think that we are seeing a new space race with China and Russia joining hands? Uh, without question, I think, and, and of course, you have the United States, uh, you have Europe uh, in, in the hunt, it, you have India in the hunt. I mean, li literally, uh, anyone who has the technological capacity and the resources is in this race, and it's definitely another one. It's just the, uh, again, I mean, you have, you know, underwater, you have surface, you have on land, you have in the air, and now you have in space. It's just the next domain uh, that humans are going to compete in, and, and it's not going away anytime soon. All right, I've been talking to... 
Retired Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis. He's a military expert and also host of Daniel Davis Deep Dive on YouTube. Colonel Davis, as always, thank you very much for all your insights and talking to us today. Always my pleasure. Thanks for having me. For all the latest news, download the We On app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.